Okay, then that is going to start recording. What should we start recording now? Okay, so before we're going to start uh, at, uh, well, continue with the with the coding, uh, I would like to ask you if you have any questions uh, regarding the G coding, if you went through the G coding in general, or if you have something in mind and you couldn't have a chance to ask me about it last time, and uh, you think that this will be the time to type out questions, and again to clarify anything you miss uh, regarding the G coding. Now, one of the common question is that uh, if you miss the beginning of uh, previous session, you will ask yourself, okay, now what is the G coding is all about? And uh, I think that by now, uh, I think that most of the students we have already had to use the at least the three printer, and they use the laser cutter, and uh, they had a look on the CNC machines around in the lab, and uh, the G coding in general is going to be once again the language that we're going to use to communicate with the machine. Specifically, what we call the numerical control machines or the NC machines. Uh, well, when I say numerical control machine or the NC machine, it, you, the name will come to your mind is, uh, or we, we know it as the CNC. Now, uh, well, same thing. The only difference is that the numerical control machines are the machines which are not connected to the, uh, to the whole system, what we know it later as a computer integrated manufacturing system. Instead of that, it's going to have its own control unit. And you are going to type in the code, something similar to the one we are going to learn how to write down today. And uh, it's going to, uh, even the code is going to be stored there and you're going to run it and it's going to do the work. For the CNC machine, it's more advanced. It doesn't have its own uh, control unit. Instead of that, it's going to be connected to a computer and the computer will do the calculation and send the order to the uh, tool head uh, to move around and do the work. In advance, uh, some of the machines actually have even more advanced procedures like the opening and the close of the chuck, uh, which is the part which hold, uh, the, the device which holding the work part on the uh, turning machine. Uh, can be controlled by the computer. We usually doing that if I can use a robotic arm to pick and place the uh, part in the machine. Now, let's go back once again to the G coding. You remember last time we said that we have a list of the G codes uh, we're using. I'm going to only show you the list of these codes. Among these codes, the one we're going to learn to use in order to write down the code are going to be the following. Uh, so it's M03 to start the program. We're going to use the uh, G00. Uh, zero, zero. This will be a movement in a straight line without having any cut. The G01 is going to be a straight cut straight movement with a cut. Is that someone send a message? No, it's research. Okay, and uh, if I would like to make a, a cut to be curved, like for example, I would like to cut uh, a curve like that. I'm going to move cutting tool either clockwise direction. In that case, I'm going to use the G02 or I can do it on the counterclockwise direction. Okay, and in that case, going to be G03. Well, if I can to finish with the code, I can simply write down M00 at the end, and this will stop the code and uh, go back to the beginning. Now, these five symbols can summarize all the uh, codes we have out of that. You can see G00, G01, G02, G03. Now the others, G04, G08, G09, you don't have to use this one actually. It's going to be a certain advanced level. 
Now for the G17 to G19 is about choosing the plane. And this will be useful once again to uh, advance them both. For example, if you would like to cut a contour shape on the X plane. So you have to go to the Z exit plane and by choosing the G18. Uh, G20 and G21, we usually get to use the metric units and all the machines around the world outside uh, United States and even in England actually, uh, they are uh, uh, programmed by default G21. That's me the G21 going to be typed if you would like to use the inches. Okay, it's already be G21. And the same thing uh, for going to use G70 and G71 in that case. Maybe one of the things you need to remember is going to be the G90 and the G91 because we know that we have the absolute dimensions and we have the incremental. Uh, for example, one of the uh, exercises I'm going to give you later this week is going to be about drilling all the holes. To drill the holes, I, uh, well, usually it's recommended to use the incremental instead of the absolute. Now, just to remind you what is the incremental and what is the absolute, the absolute is referencing all the points to the reference point. If about the incremental, they are going to reference the next point to my recent position. Okay, so something like uh, just move from my position for five meters to the left and two meters to the right. Okay, so it's going to sound like. Okay, and uh, what the other things? Uh, I think G40, G41, these things are going to be done automatically with all the machines right now. You don't have to remember that. Uh, full circle, full circle, full circle. Uh, well, once again, everything here is not going to be something to remember at this stage. <clears throat> so let's go back to the example. And uh, in this example, we would like to cut the uh, this shape. Now, mainly what we can see in this shape is going to be the profile cut and the drilling of the holes. I think that at this stage, most of you do have an experience with the machining processes, or at least you do have the uh, engineering logic thinking. I mean, for example, if I can to ask you a very simple question, if I can to ask any uh, young kid about this simple question, uh, are you going to eat the banana without uh, peeling the, the cover? The answer, question, the answer is going to be no. So to eat the, the banana itself, we have to peel off the banana. So the same thing is happening here. Uh, uh, in the engineering, we you know that in the milling machine, we have a different way to hold the part on the machine table. We can do it with the device. Device, just hold it from the side, then we can do the work at the top. Now, I said on the top. We cannot do any work on this side because cutting tool will collapse with the vice. Now, uh, the other thing is um, how to do that in that case, how I can do that. You know that we have another device called the cam. It can hold the work part on the table. Now the cam is going to hold from the side and this will prevent the face milling and also is going to prevent the profile milling. So you will ask yourself, okay, now, it seems that the clamp is not going to work. Now, the answer is it's going to work, but a certain uh, situation. Now, if we're going to talk about the third way to do that, it's just using the bolts and the nuts. Because if you remember the shape of the table, we have what the CNC moon machine. The table was uh, it's, it's a flat table, but it does have slots. And this slots is cut as T slots. We can insert what we call the T nuts from the side, and we can use the bolts to uh, to be uh, connected to uh, these nuts. So I can use these bolts and the nuts uh, to fix the work part on the table. But before that, I need to make a holes on this one if it does have uh, a holes in its geometry. The worst case is I don't have any germ, any, any holes in the geometry. I need to do the profile cutting. So the only way to hold that, I need to do a custom uh, device to hold the work part. For example, I can use a vacuum uh, uh, 
device, which is going to be a, a device, going to have multiple holes, and it's going to generate negative pressure. So if I going to put the wet part on the on the device, it's going to hold it, stop it from sliding. So what I'm just uh, talked about, I just summarized a different way to hold the part on the work table. Now in this example, let's see what we have. I'm not going to uh, make it on the presentation mode. I'm going to leave it as this. So once again, we would like to make this shape. What will be the start shape? What we can do to, uh, what, what will be the starting part uh, we're going to start cutting, cut it to make this uh, product. Uh, can you give me a hint? How does it look like? Yep. Joshua, what do you think? What will be the start uh, shape of the uh, of the part we're going to use to cut this product? I just mention what the name of the uh, geometry. Kim, what will be the shape of the part we're going to start cut it to make this product? What the start of material shape? Is it cylindrical? Is it square shape? Square. Well, to be more specific, it's going to be rectangular, right? Because you can see that we have uh, the uh, width is more than the height. So it's going to be uh, a rectangular shape. Now, uh, if uh, this width is 245 and the height is 80 plus 60, which is 140, so I can say that I can use uh, 250 for the width and I can use 120 for the height. Now, I added some material to be removed but I try to minimize the material as much as I can. Now, why we minimize the material? Because first we would like to make it to a standard. So I use 120, not 110. I'm going to use 250 and not 260 because I can make a block which, uh, to be cut it continuously to the 120, 250 and prepare it for the operation. Then what I'm going to do is I need to cut the around and I need to, of course, do the face milling and I need to drill the holes. Now, um, if I would like to cut around, I need to hold the tape, the, the part on the table without using the vise. Because if I get to put a vise here, uh, let me put a part which uh, represent the vise. If I'm going to put the vise here and another vise on the other side, uh, well, I mean the other side of the vise, the other jaw of the vise, and I try to bring my cutting tool, okay, do the profile cutting, and its way is going to cut the vise. So what will be the solution in that case? Just remember that the original part was a square shape. So again, to simulate something like that. So this was the original shape held with device. I get to change the color of that. Okay, uh, held with device. And I would like to cut around to make this a profile. Now the good thing with this one, it does have a hole. So I'm going to make this one transparent. I'm going to increase the thickness just to show you that that's what we're talking about. Okay, transparent. Now that's the part I would like to start with, a rectangular shape, and I would like to move my cutting tool on the sides to make the profile required. Now the jaw is always going to be in the way. To do another way to remove the vise is use a drilling 
uh, well, uh, turning, uh, well, milling tool to have the same diameter of these holes. So you hold the part with the vise, and you are going to bring the turning mach uh, uh, milling machine to make the holes. Maybe it's required to do the face milling. In the face milling, the jaw is going to be, uh, or the wire is going to be lower than the top surface. So I can simply move the cutting tool around to clear the face first, removing something about five millimeter to have a fresh surface. And after that, I'm going to drill these holes. I got the part ready. Maybe it's required to flip it and do the face milling on the other side as well. Now, I have a square shape which is going to have the five holes. I can simply remove the vise now, and I'm going to use the bolts and the nuts using three of these holes to fix the part on the table. Then I will write down a G code to do the profile cutting, where the cutting tool now can move without have any collapse with anything around because now it's free. The part is fixed on the table from the top, not from the sides. Usually the logical steps to do that is doing the following. First, analyze for this job is to consider the machines you are going to use. Don't mind the program zero, which is going to be at the lower left corner on the top surface of the work part. Find out how many steps uh, setups are going to be required. The first setup is going to be holding the part with the vise. The second one is going to be using the bolts and nuts to fix the thing on the table. Find out what kinds of uh, tools are required. We're talking about the cutting tools. And then you begin the program. For example, we can say that use the 10 millimeter diameter slot cutter. The slot cutter is a cutting tool with a flat head. Uh, calculate the speed and the feed suit for the workpiece and the tool. Now, if I'm going to use the high speed steel cutting tool, I'm going to be limited with the feed rate and the RPM value. And also, it's going to depend on the material I'm going to cut. It's going to be steel, it's going to be cast iron, it's going to be aluminium, or it's going to be copper, or it's going to be wood. Usually, we try to um, protect the table. So we, it's required to use a packing material of a certain thickness to allow the proper clamping and the machining properly of the job. And we use the T-nuts and the bolts for the clamping to the machine table. Set the program zero is going to be at the top surface of the square shape at the top, uh, at the uh, bottom left hand corner. We are usually going to start with the roughing uh, machine to remove the surface and have a fresh one. And then we're going to do the rest of the, uh, of the uh, code. So uh, one thing I just remember that the code we need to remember is going to be the G0, 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 yeah, I'm going to show you how to do the cut. Just give me one second. OK, so that's what we're going to start with. The yellow box is the original stock material. And this will be the movement of the cutting tool we're going to start with. And we're going to write down a code, which can be something like seven lines, and uh, finishing with the work. Now, the most important thing is we need to find out what are the locations of the part of the points we're going to move the center of the cutting tool around and I'm going to show you a trick to do that. So this is an example. I'm going to write down that on the paper, uh, different dimensions maybe, but at the end it's going to give you the same result. Okay. Now if I would like to have a shape which look like that. That's very simple shape. The R is 20. And uh, the dimension we're going to have here is going to be, let's say, 120 
uh, from here to here is going to be, uh, let's say, 80. Uh, the distance from here to here is going to be 80. Okay, and let's say that this height is the same as this one, so this one is going to be 80 again. So we have this shape, and we would like to make a code to cut this shape. Just remember that the original part was once again a rectangular shape. Now I'll just add a little bit more. Uh, so it's maybe not going to be like that uh, in the real life, but I will leave this material and this is considered to be a one millimeter material need to be removed while do the profile cutting. Now. What I need to do is I need to move my cutting tool around uh, this parameter and generate this cut. First, I'm going to identify that this point at the corner here is my x, y, z equal to 0, 0, and 0 millimeters. And that's what we call the data point. I will choose a cutting tool that have the diameter of 10 millimeters. I'm going to use it to cut this work. That's mean all my coordinations are going to be offset from this line by five millimeters. Cycle how science usually drive me crazy. Anyway, um, now uh, the best way to find the location or the points you would like to move your cutting tool around is make an offset line which is going to be parallel to the work. So I'm going to have the offset of five millimeter, which is equal to the radius of the cutting tool. So the offset of the tool path is equal half of the phi of the cutting tool. And this will be equal to five millimeters. If you remember, in this old way, we have the, op the option of offset, and you can check choose the value of this offset. Now let's consider we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to choose the parameter and I'm going to choose the offset of five millimeters. And uh, for example, I will go down to here and this will be the negative five Y. And this will be the negative five X. So this point is going to be the minus five minus five. From here, I'm going to sketch a line which is parallel to the lower side. Okay, the distance from here to here is the offset value, five millimeters. Another line was going to be parallel to this one, offset it by five millimeters. Now I have an intersection point here. This will be point number two, because this was the point number one. Oh, sorry, this was point number one. One, two. Now here, I'm going to sketch an arc, which is offset from this arc by five millimeters. This will be point number three. A line which is parallel to this line and offset by five millimeters. It's going to intersect with this offset arc and this will be point number four. A line which is parallel to this one, but offset by five millimeters and, and intersect these two lines. This will be point, uh, the point number five. Now just remember that usually this point is not going to be above this line. It's going to be a little bit here. And we are going to use a certain equation to calculate this point. But if we're going to do it graphically, 
is going to be exactly the same one. And finally, again, to sketch this line going upward, and this will be the point number six. And of course, this will be the point number seven, point number one and seven. Okay, now uh, with me, try to find out the parameters of these points. I'm going to give you, again to start with telling you that this point is equal to 120 in the X and zero in the Y. This one is going to be 120 in the X and 80 in the Y. This point is equal to 100 in the X and uh, uh, 100 in the Y. This point is equal to 120 in the X and 100 in the Y. And finally, this point is going to be 0 in the X and 80 in the Y. Now I found that. Try to practice yourself to find out the coordination of the point 1 to 7. When you're done, the first person is going to be Lisa. Tell me what is the coordination of the point here. That's uh, right, the point number two. Of course, point number one is going to be minus five and minus five. Point number two, Lisa. How much we got here? Just remember that uh, we are finding the point coordination with reference to the zero zero point. So this one is 125 plus the offset. How much we have the offset? Exactly. So the point number two is going to be x equal to One hundred twenty plus the offset. Exactly. One hundred twenty-five and minus five. Now just remember here I don't talk anything about the Z value. We're going to go to the Z value soon. We're going to have some assumptions here and we're going to talk about this one. Okay, uh, point number three. Now the X value didn't change, while well, the Y value has been changed. So uh, who's going to answer that? Jonathan, what will be the coordination of the point number three? Exactly. So it's 125 and 80 millimeters. Now, Addy, what will be the point number four coordinations are? We went back by 20 and five from this point. And we went up to the height of the Y, which is equal to 80 plus a 20 plus the offset. Eddie, what will be the coordinations? So calculating. Shall uh, Lucas or Lisa answer this question? The location for the point, uh, sorry, the coordination for the point number four. Okay, uh, 105 and 110. Okay, now um, 
once again, uh, this location was 120 and the radius here is 20. So we went back. 100, 100, so 105, it's 100. It's above this point, so it's going to be 100. 100 and the height is going to be 100 plus 5. So it's 100 and 105. Uh, okay. Now, the point number five. And now, this is your turn, Lucas. Point number five. Now, the y value, I'm oh, sorry, the y value is not changing. The x value will be go back by 80 from the recent position. So this one is going to be about 20 millimeter back because total is 120. We went back by 20. We went back by 80. So the X here is going to be equal to, look at how, how much the X value is. What the point was, the, what the coordination of the point number five Oh, maybe he's not with us at the moment. Anyway, this will be uh, point number five is going to be 20 and 105. And finally, the point number six. Is I going to tell us that or going to write myself? Ah, she's, she's once again. Oh, yeah. Minus five and 80, you're right. Minus five and 80. Okay, now I have all the points. I'm going to take off this paper because I have to write down the code on the other page using these coordinations. Okay, now that's what we call the hand sketch. And you're going to be required usually to write down your hand sketch and try to find the coordination point of it. Even when we used to have an exam, the students used to do that during the exam and they were doing the things successfully. So um, now let's take a look to a further view of the uh, starting block. So of course we said it's going to be uh, a rectangular shape block. And of course, this one is going to have height or thickness. So I'm going to start cutting the things from this point. I will consider that my uh, uh, datum point is going to be somewhere here. Okay. Uh, when I choose that, because this will be the shape of the part I'm going to cut, it's going to look like uh, that. And I need to remove all the materials above just to get uh, the final shape. Okay, so that's what I'm going to cut. Now, let's say that um, the thickness of uh, this one is um, uh, 10 millimeters. And I would like to take the, the whole thickness of the part to be, let's say it's going to be just 10 millimeters. Okay. So that will be shape, that will be the point, and we're going to write down the code for that. So away from that, uh, from the coordination, I'll write down just the code, and this will be by following uh, these steps. I'm going to make a mini uh, one of it here, which only going to be about the, uh, the outlines. So point number one, point number two, Point number three, point number four, point number five, point number six, and go back to point number seven. I'm doing that because this will be gone. Okay, now to move a straight line to be at the top of this point, again to bring my cutting tool from anywhere in this space to be 
at the new position at the top of this point. The minus five, minus five. I'm guiding the center of the cutting tool. So I'm not going to write down the code to uh, start the, well, uh, let's do it to start the machine. So let's say I'm going to have uh, the percent start. This will be the flag uh, point. And then I'm going to uh, put two points right down there. This is zero, zero, uh, zero, one. And this will be the first code we're going to write in this uh, uh, session. And then I'm going to write down with the, uh, M06. Now, uh, I tell you what the M06 is. M06 is that hold the uh, the tool, not moving, and then we are going to turn the index of the turn of the machine. Now, you know that most of the CNC machine have something called the turret, which is a disc, have the multiple index tool around it. And these tools can be three, can be five, can be seven, can be nine, and sometimes can be 10 or 12. So uh, the this turn is going to rotate something like, um, uh, well, it's a disc with a multiple thing. So it's going to rotate and each tool have a number. So usually we, we stop the movement of the tools, then we give the M06 uh, code and we call the tool. So we put at that the T capital, and the tool number. Now we call the tool, which is going to have the diameter of uh, six millimeters, or 10 millimeters, let's say 10 millimeters, the one we chose earlier. Now I don't talk here about the setup, because if I get to put a vise holding the part from the side, I'm not going to be able to do any cutting. So I will consider that this one has been held by using the vacuum uh, uh, holder, which is going to fix the thing to the table using the negative pressure, which is the vacuum pressure. Now, we did that. I'm going to write down M03, and I'm going to set that the spindle speed, let's say it's going to be 1000 RPM. Now, G00. I'm going to guide my cutting tool to go to the position to be above the point number one, which was minus five and minus five. The height should be above. Usually I don't count from the space to hit the work part because this can break my cutting tool. So I will guide my cutting tool to go to the X equal to minus five point zero zero the y don't put comma the y is equal to minus five point zero zero and the z is equal to ten point zero zero so i just brought my cutting tool from the origin point to the uh zero zero point above the zero zero point at the height of 10 millimeters I can I can write down that the feedback in this operation is 120 millimeter per minute. I can mention that. This is not going to be important. The second line is I would like to bring my cutting tool to go below to that level, to the floor level, which is minus 10 above uh, below this level. Just remember that this is the zero zero level. If I'm going to take it down. This anything below this level is going to be negative Z. So I'll write down the next step G01. I'll write down G01 because I'm going to have a contact between the cutting tool and the work part. G01, the X and the Y are unchanging because we're just going down. So the Z will be changed. The Z will be equal to minus 10. 0 0.00 with the feed rate of 100. I lowered down the feed rate because uh, I have a contact now. I do want to save my cutting tool and the work part from damaging. You can leave this one as a space or you can write down the same numbers down again. 
Now, do I miss something? The numbering of the lines, the N, 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 N. I can write down N 10, N 20, N 30, N 40. But I'm going to leave that to the last thing. So when I'm going to write down the whole code, I'm going to put the N value, the block number. Because I'm not just entering the thing directly to the machine. No, I'm writing down that on the paper. Then I'm going to enter it to the machine. So I will decide what will be the line or the block number. Now, we are here now. The center of my cutting tool is here. It's just 10 millimeter below the surface. It's attached to the work part. And now I would like to move it around to do the cutting. So, uh, Eddie, what will be the first code after that? I would like to move from one to two. straight cut with contact with the work part. So what will be the possible code again to use? One full straight cut. So it's G01. Identify for me the X and the Y again to take it to. Usually we don't need to write down the G01, but I'm going to write down this one because this will be your first code. I don't want to, uh, well, confuse you. We need to go to X and Y value, which are going to be different from the original one. So what will be the X and the Y we're going to put here? What will be the coordination for the point number two? 125 and minus five. Now, because the Y value hadn't changed, so I can write down here that this one is going to be 125.00. The Y hadn't changed, but it's going to be okay once again, because this is your first code, minus five, zero, zero. And I will keep the same feed rate, so I don't have to write it down again. Now we are here. My next target is going to be Point number three, again, G01, X is 125 and 80 for the Y. 125.00 and the Y is 80, 0, 0. Now the challenge is take it from here to here. Now, if I get to turn it in this direction, which code I need to use? What is the direction? Is it clockwise or counterclockwise? Just type it down for me, please. Set clockwise or counterclockwise? Exactly. So with the counterclockwise, you're right, G03. You, you are correct. So I'm going to write down G03. and write down the coordination for the next point, which is the point number four. Point number four is going to be 100 and 105. I will come back to this drawing soon because we need to put an R value here. So the X is going to be 100.00 and the Y is 105.00. And we need to identify the radius that the cutting tool need to rotate around. Now, if this radius is 25, what will be the radius of the hash line? Sorry, this is 20. What will be the radius of the hash line? It's up more than it because it's outside. Yeah, 25. So we write down here that the R is 25.00. If I would like to write it as the I and the J, so we need to identify the center point, this one. So in the I is going to be minus 20, uh, minus 25, sorry. 
and in the y in the j is going to be zero. So I don't want you to do that now. I'm going to stay with the R uh, until further notice. Now uh, the next point is going to be uh, here and here, then go back. So we're going to go back first to the G01, identify the X and the Y for this next point, and then G01, uh, uh, the X and Y, and then G01, the X and the Y. Now, uh, just uh, to remind you, usually when, when you try to cut a curve, uh, we don't go with the same feed rate. We're always going slower. Uh, that's because if I get to go fast, we may have uh, the, uh, what they call it, um, on a smooth surface, something like it's going to be shutter thing. So it's going to be nice if I'm going to write down here FAT just to show that we understand what's, what's happening here. Now, uh, the next point was um, the point number five here. Point number five was 20 and 105. 20105. Uh, the feed rate will go back to the 100. And then we're going to the point number six, which was the uh, uh, sorry, five, six, yeah, uh, minus five and 80. Minus five, zero, zero, and 80, zero, zero. And finally, I will go down to the minus five and minus five for the X and the Y. I'm not done yet. The last thing is going to be G zero zero, go to the Z equal to 50 millimeters. Then M zero zero, shut down the machine and go back. So uh, the line meant to be seven, but I made a full uh, code. So one, two, three, and four is the set of stage. These are the contents. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And this one is going to leave the part. So these are the contained. And then we close the program with the M00. Now from one to 10, uh, four of you, give me your rating of understanding. Great. Great. The other two, Lisa and uh, who's the other one? I think Joshua. Now just what I wrote down. Uh, Eddie, uh, eight, nine, good. Eddie, how much? Because based on that, I'm going to give you, uh, sorry, very low from me. Um, also in the end. Oh yeah, oh, sorry for that. Sorry. You can, you can, you can watch, you can, you can watch the thing like that. Yeah. Sorry for that. Okay. Uh, now, uh, for everyone. I will give you um, another diagram and I would like you to uh, find the parameters yourself and uh, write down a simple code for that. This is not a homework. Uh, this is a, an exercise. We're going to do it uh, now. Uh, let's think about um, a simple shape. Fifty, forty, the radius is going to be twenty five. Okay, so that shape, uh, choose the initial shape and make the offset and find the points and just find the coordination. Don't write the code now.
<clears throat> okay, so it seems to be simple. And once again, to make this part again to have a rectangular shape, but this one is going to be longer from one side. Usually, if I'm going to be a person who is required to cut this shape, I'm going to make it like that. So it's going to be easier to be held on the table or the CNC machine. Anyway, uh, once again, to do that, this will be my uh, point of origin. And uh, I'm going to make and lines which are offset and parallel to the original lines of the shape. And they're going to intersect and their intersection points are going to be the points where my cutting tool are going to move to make the tool path. Okay, so point number one, two, three, and four. And I can, of course, find these points and we can write down the code for that. So it's, it's very simple. Uh, if this one is 50, my cutting tool is, uh, let's say it's going to be the same 10 one. So this point is going to be the Y. The X is uh, uh, minus uh, 55 and the Y is minus five. Uh, for this point, uh, let's say it's going to go up by 40 and uh, it's going to be minus 55 and the, uh, the Y is 40. And uh, this one is going to be minus 5 and uh, 40. And this one is going to be minus 5 and minus 5. To write down the code for this one is going to be G00 to this position and G01 to go to the depth. G01, G01, G03, then G01, G00. So the, the thing is simple and is it 55? Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, right, 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 right. Sorry, I just looked at that. Th thank you for, thank you for notice that. Yep. Okay. So you are listening to me. That's good. Just gave me back my confidence. <laughs> I didn't mean it, it just happened as it is. Okay, so now um, we have two options. It's either to explain to you the example we have on the sheet, and actually I'm going to explain the example I gave you on the sheet, 
And the next one is going to be that I'll ask you to uh, analyze the code uh, by yourself. And of course, before that, try to get this one, uh, sketch it by hand. It's not now. And uh, try to tell me about how you made something similar to the code next to it uh, by the next session. There's another example, and actually this was a question in the final exam for the advanced manufacturing back in 2000, and uh, I think this was in 2018. So you can see what we have here once again. We're always going to have a home position. Now, why we have home position on the Miller machine? If I get to, uh, well, let's try to take this one down, consider that this is the table, and uh, this is the table of my Miller machine. If I get to put the part on the table and my cutting tool is at this position, it's going to be very hard to fit the things below. And also it's going to be too dangerous because it can hit my hand. So usually the cutting tool should be somewhere away from the table so we can fix the part on the table freely and safely. That's what we call the home position. And when I'm going to show you later, um, the uh, demo for the CNC milling in the lab. I'm going to show you how the uh, cutting tool will come from the uh, origin point. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, just to update you that uh, the uh, the sessions on uh, next semester, I think definitely the first month is going to be run online. This, this is bad because we're going to miss uh, the metrology lab and um, uh, anyway, the metrology app for this uh, semester uh, is going to be quite advanced than what we had earlier uh, as a part of uh, we, we actually use you as uh, uh, the lab rats. <laughs> we try to make an experiment on you. So it's going to be something like using the code from the MATLAB to check what will be the diameter of uh, uh, the circle. And also it can um, say that uh, oh, five circles have this diameter. Five, uh, three circles have the other diameter, another two circles have uh, the third diameters. And the code is ready. I, I found the code online and uh, I'm going to submit it to you and you only have to sketch something and then take the uh, photo, uh, change it to a grayscale and uh, do your analysis. This will be the test number one. I get to explain that to you online, which is a good thing. Uh, for the uh, lab sessions, I'm going to record the uh, sessions on the lab. Uh, it's going to be one uh, online and also it's going to be uh, recorded. So you can write down your report and analyze the data according to uh, my uh, videos. After that, I hope we're going to be able to go to the... Uh, uh, that's for the advanced manufacturing, Jonathan. I'm not sure if you're going to be in it uh, this semester. But uh, uh, I know that the, some of the others, at least uh, Lisa is going to be in it. Um, anyway, for everyone here, uh, on week number five, we're going to uh, run the CNC lab. Uh, that, that's actually what, why I was talking about the subject. And uh, in this lab, we're going to do the demo for the CNC machining. And for the student who is going to write down the code for their parts, and the assignment number one will be able to machine it if they want. Uh, if we couldn't make it, I once again, I'm going to record the video and uh, I'm going to post it uh, here in this, uh, uh, in this uh, course uh, page. So everyone will be able to understand how the machine is working if you haven't seen a CNC machine running before. OK, so once again, we go back to this example. We have the home position. We need to go to the point number A which is going to be the first point of the movement. Uh, this line is the tool path. That means the work we're going to cut is going to be inside this tool path uh, offset by the value of the, uh, the radius of my cutting tool. Uh, I think that was another example. Okay. Um, yeah, well, uh, away from that, I think this will be complicated. Please try to work on this one. We're going to use, um, just check, check the shape. You can see that we're going to make something like the uh, lambda uh, uh, letter, the Greek letter. And I would like you to write down the code 
to move the cutting tool between uh, the points to make this lambda shape. It's not that hard. And the guide which is going to tell you what we are going to use as a cutting tool is going to be the radius we have here. The radius of uh, this fillet is going to be the radius of the cutting tool you are going to use. Write down this one, you already have the answer. Follow the steps. Uh, the most important thing is make your hand a sketch. We're going to make it right now on the paper and uh, try to make the movement between the point. I'm not going to give you the coordination. I'm going to make the hand a sketch. You need to find it yourself and write down a code which is going to be similar to this one as a part of your exercise for the next session. Uh, this was an example for the question they had earlier in the um, in one of the assignments. And as you can see here, I just put the location of the uh, cutting tool uh, to perform the cutting of this part uh, at different points. Uh, once again, you can you can take a look at this one. You have the dimension and you can uh, write down the solution of this one. Or maybe we're going to leave this one as the final exam uh, for uh, this session. Now let's go back to this exercise. And actually, this is one of the prank sessions I'm running at the uh, Washington Union. Uh, for the CNC machining. So what we can see here, I'm going to go back to the camera again. Uh, I'll try to do the following. Yeah, I, I'm going to put this one here and uh, I'm going to share the camera with you. Okay, so we would like to write down the code to write down the Greek letter of Lambda. We have a block. Square block. Uh, doesn't matter now what the dimension of this block. And uh, just wait here because I cannot see clearly. I need to zoom in. Okay. Okay. And inside we have this shape. Now, fortunately for this shape, we're only going to make uh, two uh, G02 or G03, which is going to be here and here. The cutting tool will move in these positions. Now, again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a lines. Now, this one is internal. So I'm going to make the lines which is going to parallel to that line, uh, but to the inside with the offset equal to the radius of my cutting tool. Okay, so this will be the movement. Now to find the coordination, oh, of course we have a hole here and this will be the challenge. The hole has a phi value, which is equal to 20 millimeters. Now what we know from here is the following. Uh, the height of this line from the bottom is 20. The height of the center is another 20. And the same thing here. Uh, this one is going to be 20. And here we're going to have a 20. Now what given to me that the, uh, the radius here is four, and uh, the radius of this one is eight. And I need to use a single cutting tool to perform the whole cut. If I get to bring this one to here, and you will have actually, I already uh, uploaded this sheet to you. Uh, okay, you can see, oh, sorry, this is 12, this is 12. 12. That's mean the uh, distance from here to here is going to be equal to 12. And uh, uh, we can divide that into uh, three fours. So the solution for this one, after it, the first thing is you need to find the location of these points and the location of the intersection at this line. So let's think about it. 
I'm going to make a cutting tool. Okay, and this one has a four millimeter diameter. To have four millimeter diameter, that means it's going to be attached to here. So we don't have we don't have to make a G02 here because the radius of this cutting tool is equal to the radius of the field we have. So um, this will be position number one. Okay, and the one next to it is going to be the last position. In its way, the cutting tool will travel all the way around and come back following the following lines. So uh, let's make a curve here. Okay, that's one. Copy. And this will be the second. Now, of course, this should be smaller, a little bit smaller. So I need to take this one down. Okay. Okay, now, uh, the rest of the tool path is going to be as following. It's going to going up from the middle here to that point. Oh, it's going to the side. I hate that. Okay. And um, we're going to have another line. From here to here. Okay, and another line and from here to here. Okay, seven five. So now the blue line is going to be the tool path. My tool should follow uh, this line, and in this way, it's going to cut the whole thing. Or maybe this one you need to go to the, to the side. I know it's, it's not that perfect, but anyway, it's uh, it's good. It's good. Okay, now uh, that's what you need to find. The point number one, point number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now, why nine? If I didn't go back to this position, I will leave uh, a v, uh, a, 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 a knob here. It's going to be a shape going up at this point. So uh, I need to start from here, going around, and come back here. Now to find the points. As this radius is 4 millimeter, I'm going to use the cutting tool, which is going to have 8 millimeter diameter. So my cutting tool is going to uh, it's going to be eight. Um, where this is four. Yes, 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 it's going to be eight. So I'm going to get the tool to here. That means it's going to be uh, the first point for the x value is going to be this distance zero to here. That's what we have in the way is going to be 20 plus 4, so the x is going to be 24. The y is going to be 20 plus 4 again. So my first point is going to be 
the X is 24 and the Y is 24. Now I will go up to that this point. Now this point, as you can see here, is going to be the same height of this one. The X hadn't changed, which is 24. The Y is, this one is 100 millimeter. We count from the, from the top, it's 100 minus 32. And this will make it 68. So that the second point is going to be uh, 24 for the X and 68 for the Y. Now, my next point is going to be here. I probably prefer to do it like that. Here. Now, for this point, the coordinates are going to be uh, for the X of this point here is going to be 20 plus 12 is 32 minus 4, 28. And the Y value is going to be equal to 100 minus 24 plus 20 and then 4 down. And this will make it as 76. Now I find point number 1, 2 and 3. Then the cutting tool will move to here, to the, this point. This point, the Y is going to remain the same. For the X value, it's going to be equal to 100 minus 24, which is 76. The point below, the same X, but the Y is going to be 100 minus 32 plus 4, which is uh, uh, 100 minus 28, 72. Then it's going to be your challenge to find uh, this point and that point. And write down a code for it. The code is going to be very simple. G00 to here. G01 to go beneath by the depth of, let's say, five millimeters. Then you go G0, I'm sorry, where is cutting tool? G01, G02, G01, 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 G03, G01, and G01. That will be uh, the code to cut this lambda shape. Next week, I'm going to show you how to do the cut of this circular. Let's not get next week, it's in the next session. I'm going to learn how to cut uh, this part by using the small cutting tool. We may, not, we may have a diameter of uh, 20 millimeter cutting tool, but we are going to use the same cutting tool to cut this part. In real life, the cutting tool is going to move as a spiral shape. Spiral shape is very hard to be uh, uh, coded by hand, so I'm going to show you how to uh, code it much easier in the next session, which is going to be on uh, Thursday uh, at the same time, 7 p.m. Okay, thank you very much for your attendance today. And I hope that you got uh, a good knowledge from today's session. And I hope that uh, we're going to learn even more uh, in the next few sessions we're going to have for this semester, for this course. Thank you very much and hope to see you soon. Yeah, uh, please work, work on this uh, uh, example because it's going to be very useful for you to uh, to go to a higher stage of uh, uh, programming. Thank you very much, everyone. Now, once again, the recording is